Hi, what I want to do in this video is talk through some of the basic um, parts that make up uh, this geological structure we call folds. It's an important part of geology because if we are to describe folds for other geologists or, or to understand what other geologists are talking to us about folds, we need to have the right language, the right terminology to see what they're talking about. Now, if we're going to get into the terminology, perhaps where we need to start is by actually looking at what a fold is. Here in this exposure, you can see some quite spectacularly folded sedimentary rocks. The folds we see here are wave-like geological structures that are the result of stress being applied to this rock usually from tectonic forces. But when these rocks have uh, been compressed, rather than breaking, they've bent, creating this, um, this structure. Now there's lots of different forms of this, but they all have some similar features and it's those that I want to get into. Okay, let's have a look it's a simple diagram of some folds. Here you can see the layers that have been deformed uh, and bent into these wave-like structures. Now there are some things that our core specification requires us to understand. And these come, well these are largely based, first of all, on identifying what we call the hinge point of a fold. Now the hinge is the point where the bed is actually bent, where the inclination of the bed actually changes. Once we define the hinge of a fold, we can then start to recognize the limbs of the fold. Now a limb is the bed in between hinge points. So the bed that's been uh, tilted and deformed in between these two hinge points. The hinges also help us define what we call the axis of the fold. This, I suppose, is the middle of the fold where we have the hinge points along one bedding plane in a line. If we join together the axes uh, and the hinge points for several different beds in this sort of imaginary um, surface that you can see outlined in red on this diagram, that creates a feature we call an axial plane. Now, these folds have a particular Form. We can define that when we look at the surface of um, a geological map where we'll see what we call the axial plane trace. Now the axial plane trace is the, uh, a line that we can mark on, a, on the surface on a geological map that marks where the axial plane would actually reach the surface. Very often it, it, it it's the middle of the folded structure. The axial plane trace will help us define what type of fold we have. We can see that this structure in the middle here, uh, the beds are folded up. It creates sort of a, uh, a dome-like structure. This type of fold we call an antiform. Where we see beds folded down to create a, a trough shape, we describe that as a sin form. So that's a down fold. An antiform creates an up fold. If we refine that a little bit further, 
we can talk about uh, a fold such as this one as being an anticline. Now an anticline has the features that we can uh, identify now that we've looked at from the previous um, image. You may want to uh, annotate up your own diagrams of this. And you may be thinking, well, that's the same as an antifold, which is true if the beds are the, are the correct way up. In this case, we have the oldest beds there at the bottom or in the middle of the anticline. And if we look at the surface of this block diagram, you'll see we get the repeating patterns of beds that tell us we have a fold. And the age of those beds decreases as we get further away from the axial plane. The dip of the beds, which you can see marked with the black arrows on this diagram, points away from that axial plane. These are the two key features that allow us to identify uh, a fold as an anticline, particularly on a geological map where you can't see that side-on cross-sectional view. This fold, which is synformal, is also a syncline. Again, if we look at the pattern of beds that we see uh, exposed on the top surface of this block diagram, again we get a repeating pattern, which tells us we have a fold, but the pattern here is different. Here in a syncline, we see the youngest bed in the middle of the fold, where the axial plane is, and the beds get progressively older as we go away from that axial plane. The dip arrows shown in black are pointing towards each other. Both key features of making this a syncline. There are some descriptive terms as well we can apply to this, as well as identifying them. In particular, looking at the symmetry of a fold. This diagram shows two different folded beds, labelled A and B. Let's identify the hinge points of these folds. If you look at the hinge points here of uh, bed A, we can see that these hinge points are equally spaced. Another way of describing this is that the length of the limbs is equal. Now where that's the case, this type of fold we can describe as being symmetric. So we have a series of symmetric antiforms and synforms because the length of those limbs, the distance between hinge points, is equal. If we contrast that with bed B, again, if I mark on the hinge points, you'll notice the pattern of hinges here is different. Here, the hinges are not equally spaced. The length of the limbs is different. That makes these antiforms and synforms asymmetric. Remember, this isn't about the dip of the beds. It's about the length of the limbs. That's the key thing that allows us to determine fold symmetry. OK. We can see that folding has a range of technical terms. All the ones in this video are the ones you need to know. And we can also see the distinctive patterns that we see on the surface, so what would make a geological map, allows us to work out what type of fold we're dealing with.
Now remember to come up with your interesting question and bring it to class. I'll see you then.